Hi everyone, my name is Samantha Jamison. I am the Program Director of 4-H Youth Enrichment and Ag Education in Lewisa County. Today we will be doing a farm chat with local farmer Mike Jamison, who is my dad, and he is a cattle and row crop producer. We, he produces corn and soybeans, and why corn and soybeans in Iowa? Because it is ideal soil for growing those types of crops. It is the cash crop of the area. Uh, down south you will find more cotton and peanuts and here in the Midwest uh, corn and soybeans are king. Uh, so soybeans and field corn are used for many different things. Uh, they are used for feed for cattle and for uh, poultry and swine. Uh, corn is used for also ethanol and for uh, that is for the used in fuel for your vehicles it is also used uh, for making sweetener uh, corn syrup for human consumption soybeans are used for tofu and other human food products so we are going to turn around and speak with Mike and let him show what planting is all about. Hi everyone. Like Sam said, my name is Mike Jameson. I'm a 1990 grad from Iowa State University. Uh, today I'm going to give you a kind of a brief uh, overview of what we do for uh, planting corn and soybeans here. Um, I run a relatively small operation. Uh, we plant roughly 300 and acres of corn and about 150 acres of soybeans. Um, seed of choice today we're planting corn. A seed of choice today is uh, uh, Rob Seedco seed. Uh, I happen to be a dealer for that so uh, a little biased on that. But uh, so each bag of seed corn here has 80,000 kernels in it. Uh, depending on the kernel size uh, those bags can weigh anywhere from 64 down to 35 pounds. Um, I'll explain to you a little bit on the planter when we get over there, but uh, uh, today's the 23rd of April, and uh, it's prime time to be planting corn. Uh, on a normal year, whatever that could be, uh, we'd like to start planting somewhere around the 15th of April. Uh, this year has been just a little um, tricky at trying to get started at that time, but, but uh, we'll take the 23rd. Uh, for the most part, we want to get our corn in before the end of May. As uh, the middle of May approaches, we start losing yield potential. And so uh, it's critical that we get uh, corn planted, uh, you know, before the 20th of May, if we, if we at all possible can. Last year was an example of a year that uh, that didn't happen. There was a lot of corn that wasn't planted until June, but we still had some pretty decent uh, yields. Um, uh, so. One of the big things we, we want uh, uh, our soils to be relatively dry. Uh, in my case, I still do a uh, uh, kind of a conventional tillage program. Um, our bean stubble is not touched that I'm planting into until right before I plant, and then uh, we'll run over it with a soil finisher to, to, to open the soil up and, and uh, let it air out. Uh, we want our soil temperature to be somewhere around 50 degrees preferably or above when we plant and that has also been kind of a struggle this spring it's been a little on the cool side so uh, um, it is what it is every year is a little different so um, in our case like I said we we worked this ground up I've got the planter set over there I have started doing end rows and uh, we'll commence to uh, uh, planting here really soon uh, you will notice when we get there that the equipment that I uh, favor is uh, or use is uh, on the older side again back to the size of our operation at 300 acres of uh, corn and 100 acres of soybeans uh, it's not that I don't uh, uh, grasp or uh, uh, want new technology like a lot of farmers do uh, I just cannot justify doing that on my small operation so what we do here has got some limited type technology compared to what you'll see the normal Iowa farmer have, uh, but there's still a few of us that run in this older uh, technology world. So, um, 
this particular corn that we're that we're growing today uh, it goes by uh, days to maturity uh, the corn that I'm planting today most of is a hundred and eight day so if we're um, um, planting this on the 23rd of, of uh, April we'll be looking at at uh, harvesting the end of September uh, with conditions uh, you know being being good and it goes by growing degree days which is the the uh, each growing degree day is the is the uh, um, for every day that's between 86 and um, what was it 50 I can't remember what the lower number is uh, anyway for each one of those you get a growing degree day and that figure skips my mind right now anyway uh, so uh, for every day of those growing degree days your corn will optimally uh, uh, mature and uh, uh, develop in the air with kernels on it so if we step over here I'll kind of show you the As I said before, this is not the newest equipment. The planter is an 8-row John Deere 7000 that was produced in about 1978. The tractor is a John Deere 4010 and it is a 1963. So I'm running a uh, tractor older than myself and a planter that's uh, older than Samantha by several years. It doesn't mean it's not without its technology. It does have a monitor on it that uh, lets me know how many are dropping in the ground and that each row is used is running the way it's supposed to instead of a guidance system I have a marker that marker trails down and, and marks the center of my next pass coming back when I come back I'll have to send the tractor running through that marker and that makes my rows the same all the way across I'm planning in 30 inch rows which means 30 inches from the center of this row to the center of the next row. Okay. Early planters from the 1800s, when they first made mechanical planters, had a disc that spun around. And that disc had a hole in it. And every time that hole passed over an opening, a seed would drop and go into the ground. This type of planter has a finger unit, which it has a spring-loaded finger that as it goes by, it grabs a kernel of corn out of the box and drops it down into the seed tube and into the ground. I can change the rate by how that is dropped through the settings on the planter. I am planting at 35,000 seeds per acre right now, which means on the 30-inch row, I will have roughly a seed every five inches putting that seed into that increment, that five inch increment is very critical. Probably the most important thing of growing uh, corn and soybeans is it's always been taught to be seed placement. You want to have a, a optimal population or seeds per foot. That also means seed per acre. So like I said, I'm planting at 35,000 seeds per acre. How big is an acre? Well, roughly 43,500 square feet, which is about 600 feet square. If you look at that building up the road, most of the roads in Iowa are laid out in one foot, or one foot, in one mile increments. So there's a gravel road right on the other side of that hog building. And to the west, you can see some buildings clear down there. That's the next gravel road. That is one mile. Each one of those square miles is one section. In Iowa, you hear people talk about acres. And in a section, there are 640 acres. When you go out west, where there's a lot of bigger farmers, 
and bigger areas between farmsteads, you won't hear people talk about acres as much as you will sections because it's such a vast area of emptiness, kind of, you know. Uh, things out there are on a lot larger scale than there are in Iowa. It used to be, there used to be a farm in Iowa about every 160 acres. Uh, now, it's gone up considerably from that. Uh, you'll go several places where you might go a couple miles before you see a, a, a farmstead. Uh, some areas you still see maybe a farmstead on every 300 or 360. I do not know today what the average Iowa farm uh, size is, but it's considerably larger than what it was in the um, uh, 70 years ago. So with that, what other questions might you have? Can you explain a little bit of how exactly that seed drops down? So on this unit, As the planter goes across the ground, it is gear driven by a chain and a transmission. And like I said before, I can change the speed of that transmission to drop more seeds per inch or per acre. As it moves, this has a finger system in it. And as it spins, as you see, corn will drop out of the bottom of that seed unit, goes into a tube and the planter has a um, set of wheels that open up a trench and that seed drops as I pull forward. Okay, and that works the same on corn and soybeans, but the technology is different. Some uh, planters have finger pickups like this. Some planters have vacuum or air driven uh, units to transport the seed from the box to the ground. You'll see a lot of the newer planters have a large centralized box in the center of the planter instead of these small individuals. Instead of instead of using one of those large or one of those uh, uh, bags that I showed you earlier, they might use a uh, large plastic container that usually has 40 or 50 units in each one. So it's all a matter of how big an area you're running, uh, how big a planter you've got, and a uh, and matter of efficiency on your operation. So you said that one of, one of these wheels will open up a trench. How do you not have birds stealing the seeds afterwards? So, hey, come here. This big yellow wheel, I can adjust the depth and so on corn I tried to plant my corn at two inches below the soil surface this cutter that you can kind of see in the front are two feed plates and they form the trench this wheel regulates the depth I've got lots of help here today and as these two wheels go by they then close the trench that was created at the beginning, thus sealing the top of the trench with the corn having dirt around it. The reason we like to do planting when the soil is dry like this is that you also want to have very good seed to soil contact. And so if it's very wet, that trench won't get closed up and you'll end up with an air pocket in there and corn won't germinate very well that way or grow. So right now conditions are nearly perfect for you know, planting, our, planting our crop. For those of you that are viewing, please knock on wood because we don't want there to be a whole bunch of conditions that change for our farmers while they're working on that. So when he was opening up that box and we saw the corn drop, you might have seen that that corn is pink in color. Can you explain why it is pink in color? That is a, the seed treatment. Most of those corn has got different types of seed treatments. 
uh, corn and soybean both um, to protect against uh, environmental conditions. Uh, some of it can be a fungicide uh, to protect against uh, uh, different um, uh, moisture organisms that are in the soil. The other thing is to protect against different insects that could attack the seed uh, during the time it's in the ground and while it's growing. And you'll see different uh, different colored. Some some seed will be green. Some will be um, pink. And when you go to soybeans, you might even see purple. It all depends. There's several different seed uh, seed treatments available. Uh, this corn is all uh, not corn that comes out of a bin. So what we grew last year is not planted uh, this year out of a bin. There is uh, each these companies like uh, Rob Seco that I talked about before. They process, they grow corn specifically for next year. And it is cleaned and treated and bagged for next year's uh, seed purpose. Um, so for the most part, you will not take anything out of the bin to plant. Uh, it will be all processed seed that is comes in and, and there are different seed varieties and different seed uh, maturities depending on where you're at. As you go into the northern part of Iowa, you'll see a lot of earlier maturing corn and soybeans because their growing season is not as long as what ours is here in Southeast Iowa. All right, one more question. How is this corn different from the corn that we eat, otherwise known as sweet corn? Uh, most of that is because of the sugars that are in that corn. You could take field corn and try to eat it when it is immature, the, the first part of July like your sweet corn is, but it will have a completely different taste because of the amount of starches that are in it and the lack of sugar compared to the sweet corn that you enjoy at your dinner table. All right, well, we're not gonna keep him much longer. He's gonna, he, as he said, it was optimal conditions for planting. So we will watch him as he gets started on a couple of his rows. As he said earlier, he's got a couple of the end rows done. And those end rows are just the parts you see at the very edges of the field. And so now he will get ready to plant the actual rows down the field. So we'll watch him get going. That marker that he was talking about has made this wide trench. So he will know exactly where he is going to set up his planter for the next round back. That is the type of early on technology that is used in some of that older equipment. So you just saw him line his planter back up onto the trench that he made with his marker. He's got the planter right over that middle part and he is coming back this direction.
back out of his way. And then we'll go look at some of those spots that he had planted and see where that corn actually is sitting, sitting compared to the top part of the ground. some of the corn that he had planted once he drives back off. So you can see his planter is up. That's just so he's not placing any seeds in the spots that he has already planted. So he's going to put it back down when he gets ready to start planting again. which he won't do until he gets back down to the edge of the field to start doing the long rows. So he's going to go back and forth long ways to be more efficient. So let's take a look at some of the corn that he planted. I've got just the same amount of help that Mike had when he was showing us the planter. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to show you guys any seeds today because I've got all my help. And there's my help again. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something about planting crops and some of the old school technology that some farmers around here still use. So when you see farmers out on the road, give them plenty of space and don't be in a hurry to pass them because those farmers all have their own families that they need to get back to when they're moving equipment from field to field. Thank you. Have a good day.